Hello, you're listening to the Robot Wars History Podcast, a podcast where we chat the development of the show and the British robot combat scene in general by looking at key teams and bots. I'm your host Luke, and with me today is Nick. Yes, I am here to talk about my favourite machine, which you will find out about momentarily. And special guest, Space Maniac. Hey, it's good to be back, as said. This is my uh, second podcast after the Series 3 controversy. And yeah, very excited to be here, especially since Tornado was actually one of my favourite robots back in Series 7. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's what, yes. we will be covering uh, Tornado today. We'll be covering part one of Tornado's career from Series 4 to Series 5. Beautiful. That's the thing, isn't it? Good old Space Maniac was part of the Series 3 controversy, and now he's part of every controversy with the Tornado <laughs> episode. Uh, yeah. <laughs> was it really that controversial, Dave? Well, what are you going to be part of next? The redone Napalm episode. We go over oh. every controversial decision. Uh, don't oh. diss Napalm. It was a fine machine. <laughs> Love a bit of Napalm, mate. So, yeah, we'll, we'll start off with Series 4. Uh, Tornado makes its debut. It's it, it, it was always kind of the same basic bot. It was a box on four wheels and mostly the weapon on front just changed. But this one is uh, a significantly different bot from the one we would know in later seasons, as it's the only version of Tornado which is pre-weight increase, so 80 kilograms. And it debuts against Gemini, the seeded cluster bot, and Caterpillar. Yep. And man, yep. Be- Tornado is only 10 miles an hour, but it's always it always looks so much faster, man. It always did. It's because of that ex- acceleration, isn't it? It gets off the mark so quickly, whereas something like, I don't know, most robots in Robot Wars, you know, they they start off at about one mile an hour, get up, get up to two after about ten seconds. Tornado gets up to about ten in about, I don't know, half a second in comparison, it feels like. Yeah, it was pretty much a robot less to do with its weapons, more to do with its fundamentals, because, yes, you can have a big, large, massive weapon, but it can't do anything if the robot's fundamentals are poor. I think also I think also the I think also something that's it's more evident in the next two fights, but I think it I think the dry the sheer power makes it seem faster because when it hits things yeah. it, it doesn't look like it's going ten miles an hour, it looks like it's going about twice that. Um kind of an inospe- inaspicuous start here. Uh, Tornado's mostly focused on just bullying Caterpillar around. Uh but once once it's kind of done with Caterpillar, it almost it almost gets the exact it almost gets the exact attack on Gemini that immobilized it in the final, like it misses the spike by like an inch. Yeah, it said it essentially foreshadowed what was going to happen, wasn't it? I did pick that up, and um, I wonder if that influenced the team to focus on one particular side of the arena for, say, the rematch. Potentially. Yeah, I guess it was one of those things where they just looked for something visual to kind of get Gemini stuck on and in a, in a, in a round on. So you, even if they took it towards, like, I don't know, something else that stood out. Like, I don't know, in series, why? Well, imagine if, say, I don't know, the grill was still there. Imagine Gemini getting immobilized on the grill. Fuck no. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, Jesus. but um, yeah, you can uh, tell that. I think either way, Tornado wouldn't have needed a static spike on the arena to have won its fight, but it, it always looks tactically nice when it ended up pulling off that manoeuvre later in the episode. Well, I actually beg, beg to differ, but we'll discuss that later in the episode. Uh, yeah, well, before that fight, Tornado fights um, the much-diminished Berserk too, and this is really the first of many uh, classic Tornado dominations, because Berserk basically has no means of effectively attacking Tornado. Yeah, like its axe, even in series three, wasn't exactly the best. It was all about the lifter and solid armor for the time. But here, it never really gets a chance to get the lifter into play because it turns so slowly in series four. And yeah, Tornado completely takes advantage of it. Broadsides, broad back, broad front, it can push it just about wherever it wants, so... Mm. I'd Berserk argue never stood a chance. I'd argue that Berserk 2 is actually dead on its on the first attack tornado did because 
But yeah, I pretty much. By the time it achieved that attack, like Berserk 2 was like moving at 0.5 miles an hour, let alone one mile an hour. Yeah, you can tell and... it certainly shook it up pretty early on. Yeah, I don't understand why Berserk 2 was so uncompetitive in Series 4. Because uh, as... it was built in two weeks. No, oh, but that explains <laughs> That's it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. And, um, but even if it was the Series 3 version, it would not have stand, stood a chance. Absolutely not. Um, we see, the thing is, like, Tornado's power, I don't think, is unique in Robot Wars. Um, we kind of saw it before Series 4 with Stegosaurus. We'd see it after Storm 2. But one thing I don't think either of those bots had was how relentless Tornado is. Like, it does it's not... It's not just about like flashy slams into the side. It's just constantly. Yeah, on these exactly. Just like ne- with, with the examples you leave. mentioned, they're good ones as well. Steg was definitely the most consistent up to that point. And then in series one, you know, we had a very much downplayed version in Roadblock, a different type of machine, more controlling. And then series two was the first time we really had a pure ramming aggressor like all talk and King Buxton to a degree as well. So we slowly made our way towards a more powerful, consistent machine. And the thing is, even Tornado had its fundamental issues in Series 4, but when it did work, which was the majority of the time, it was very, very powerful, of course. Yeah, and another thing about Tornado, which I've come to admire, is that it's not just a pushing power. It always somehow, some way, found a little gap in its opponent. It would just be mm-hmm. able to push it there, and then suddenly it's, it's a side-on attack all of a sudden. Yeah, it, it always pushed from the right angles to set up the follow-through drive, didn't it? Yeah, it was just incredible. That I said, no, very few machines could actually stood up, stand up to that. So no wonder Tornado was so dominant in its later years. So yeah, Tornado makes short work of Berserk too. Uh, we go on to the Gemini fight, and honestly, if there's a bad match for Gemini, it's an aggressive, <laughs> full weight, bullish rambot like Tornado. Honestly, I don't think Gemini did that badly. I mean, one of the twins, I actually felt, almost could have won that match on its own. Because, well... well you Yeah, I, it did do well. It did get off a couple of good flips, and... It did actually immobilize it at the end of the fight, technically, after one of the Gemini twins was already dead itself. But yeah, to be fair, it did do well for itself. I'll, I'll agree with you there. Yeah. That said, though, Tornado was definitely one of those cleverer machines. I said, figuring out to use the arena spikes like that. I mean, why were the spikes even there in the first place? I don't know, but... Overall, that was one of the more useful uh, knockouts for that particular Yeah, I mean, they, they, even had, they even had, I think it was in Heat A and Heat A only, that little uh, pneumatic arena spike that just popped out and knocked King Buxton a couple of times. And that was the <laughs> only time I've ever seen that activated, ever. And it just never returned and did anything. It's like, all right, fair enough. Best arena I did ever. Ah, uh, yeah. Um... But yeah, I do say, though, that Tornado versus that other Gemini machine could have been an interesting battle on its own. I think Tornado at one point even punctured Gemini's tyre, and I don't think uh, Jonathan Pierce actually mentioned that. And so if that ended up in a judge's decision, I think Tornado still could have won that based on the damage accumulated. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, you kind of see in this fight uh, that this first build of Tornado has some degree of fragility built into it. Cause Tornado is pretty much dead by the end of it. Uh, the other Gemini twin immobilizes them. And um, it kind of almost it almost happens in their um, next fight against Wheelie Big Cheese. I'm pretty sure at the end of the this fight, Tornado is also immobilized. Yeah, I think only I think half of its drive works but it's very much, it's smoking it's static in place, and Wiggly Big Cheese itself is hardly moving too. But yeah. either way, this was a great fight. Yeah, great. It's we- oh, sorry, carry on. Go on. No, carry on. I was going to say it's um, Wheelie Big Cheese is that's it seems like the perf the perfect victim for Tornado, but they're pretty good at fending Tornado off at the start until they miss the flip, and because it's Wheelie Big Cheese, they get stuck in place on that missed flip for like 
20 <laughs> seconds and Tornado can bully him into the CP zone and knock the wheel loose. I love the fact, though, that Wee Big Cheese almost won that battle from the very first flip. Nearly yeah. achieved an Audi Arena. That would have been an amazing um, nearly did a similar, Nearly did a similar out of the arena flip to the one it got on Wolverine, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things, really, isn't it? So many good machines in Series 4. Even Gemini itself, it didn't live up to its potential in the end, but... It's, there's many machines it could have beaten in the heat finals as well and reached the semifinals itself. So there's fine margins in fights like these, even with a machine that went on to be as good as Tornado because of, as Luke said, does have a bit of fragility at this stage and to be expected in its debut wars as well, of course. Yeah, I think I think trying to I think packing that much power into an eighty kilogram machine is going to be difficult. And yeah. Especially when it's the first machine you've ever built. Yeah, exactly. Like they did incredibly well to get as much power as they could have out of it, but and maybe that's why they went for it, that type of thing, that raw power to get them on the show in the first place. But Yeah, I mean, um yeah, if you wanna because I mean the the first robot tornado ever fought in a uh, in their first ever live event was Dan Tom Kia back when that was a push button. Mm-hmm. That didn't get on the show because it, it was successful, but very boring. Yeah, exactly. To watch, the so. original Dan Tom Kia was always regarded as successful itself. Yeah, but so, yeah, and, also, and in addition as well, Tornado qualified by defeating T Two R Special for series. Oh, four. robbed, robbed of a champion that loved a bit of T Two. <laughs> did I? Yeah, um, T Two <laughs> was a decent enough pusher, I suppose. I mean, it wasn't exactly the most damaging. That's why it lost to Dark Destroyer. On a controversial decision, no less, but yeah, I think I think the word you use there kind of makes obvious why Tornado is different. You could bots like T T two, they are push bots yeah. really. Tornado is by, is unquestionably a ram bot. Um, not not the ram bot, but a ram bot. Um, <laughs> in their next in their next fight, uh, they go against Chaos two and. You know, some people say this fight is a trilogy, but really, they had five fights with Chaos 2. <laughs> so, in the first take, the arena is somehow damaged. I have no idea how, but it was. Uh, maybe Chaos 2 flipped them, they landed on the wall and it fell off or something like that. <laughs> but, you know. In the second fight, both of them end up immobilized, so there's no you can't declare a winner. And so the third fight made it to TV, and yeah, George Francis pins him in near the wall and gets him out gets them over. I do wonder whether the first two fights took its toll on Tornado and that's why Chaos 2 had such an easy time because clearly based on the second fight it seemed to be a decent enough tussle if Chaos 2 was immobilised. Yeah I mean and even for the fights afterwards that they had where Tornado showed it could push Chaos 2 around quite a bit as well so it's one of those where it's hard to tell because we didn't see the other two fights. We can only speculate based on text and what we've heard, but yeah, it's, uh, it's possible. It's hard I, one I, to I'd know, give but... more credit to I'd give more credit to um George Francis because he does he does kind of cut off Tornado. He gets oh yeah, he side. gets a lovely angle on them, doesn't he? And then rolls um, them two or three times to the arena wall. That's really well done. Yeah, yeah. And it did also show how um, Tornado kept getting stuck as well. I said it was easy out of arena fodder once it ended up in that position. Yeah. For anyone who thinks, um, for anyone who thinks the arena walls were short, you should see this bloody fight. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, they're so small. I think they're about the height. They're just just a bit taller than Chaos Two. Yeah, and Chaos Two itself always looks a very compact machine compared to a, yeah. a good portion of the field. So. But yeah, that's that's series four for Tornado. It's a very it's a very good debut season. Uh, immediately gets him into the top eight, uh, and then we move on to the weight increase era, into Extreme One. And if any robot defines Extreme One, it's Tornado. <laughs> they have thirteen fights in this season. Thirteen. And Blooper Spoof hasn't done a video, did you say on them? No, <laughs> that no, is incredible I, yeah, I was stuff. amazed when I looked that up. I was like, how has this not happened? <laughs> You know, we've got like Robo Savage all fights, but Tornado all Extreme One fights, no sorry. <laughs> it's too much work. I can't Even blame him, like... to be fair, yeah. 
it's like, yeah, oh, even he's like, nah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, I have to admit that this was the era where people had to ask, had to tell Tornado, we won't miss you if you won't go away, because in Series 7, you know, you know, a linear format, so to speak, you know, I actually watched that series first, and I really enjoyed Tornado's fights, believe it or not. Yes, even Series E, you know, he even, even though that wasn't the great heat, I still enjoyed that. And then we get to this where, yes, it's good battles, but there's just too many of them, for God's sake. Can we just please have a look at episode yeah, two it, where we it, don't see them? Yeah, you're not wrong. Like, they have an amazing fight against Tornado, against Tornado, against Chaos 2, which in itself had a bit of controversy. And then they give us another fight against Chaos 2 where it basically feels like one of the cut fights from Series 4 between them where one of them just loses drive early on and not much happens, so... Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm so I'm so happy they lose the mayhem in this. Oh yeah, but like, I was about to need, say we didn't uh, need to make that eight, we didn't need to make that like eighteen fights. Yeah, I was about to say at the end of the series four coverage, there it would have been great to have Tornado in like any of the series four side events or the Annihilator or whatever because it would have been an interesting one to have in there. You don't know how long it would actually go on for before it had any issues if it ended up having some. But can't imagine it making out. Yeah, can't imagine it making out of an annihilator. Yeah, but in Extreme One, you kind of feel like, aside from that fluke King Buxton side prod that pulled out the link, it probably would have gone on to win an annihilator as well. So I just have to wonder yeah. why was it that Tornado and to an extent Hypnodis were given so many battles. I mean, on Hypnodis side, it was arguably the most disappointing machine in Extreme One. And that was mainly because yeah. of how many fights it had to do in one day. And then you have Tornado, yeah. who I think at one point had to fight five battles in one day in Extreme 1. <sighs> no wonder it broke down eventually in a well, the yeah. Mayhem battle. I think it's one of those things where obviously Extreme 1 was largely limited to a select amount of machines. Like It wasn't a complete series of like 100 plus bots. It was like a good... 60 or so and then obviously the wildcard warriors and a few newcomers and stuff like that but largely you'd even see things like come and get Eric's get multiple fights so when you chuck tornado into things like the challenge belt and then it wins fights in that and then it gets into the world championships as well goes deep into the all-stars like it, it always was kind of going to snowball in terms of what yeah, we'd see of it. You wonder if they were trying to push them. You wonder if it was yes. just like... Because they're, they're a reliable competitor. Yeah. So you're going to get good TV out of them. It's weird. Yeah. Um, looking at its battles, we'll start with the All-Stars. Um, not a lot to say on their fight against three Stegs to Heaven. <laughs> no. Um, Tornado versus Stegosaurus or Steg 2 might have been interesting in Series 4, but... Not three stegs, not them against three stegs to heaven here. Um, three stegs breaks down very quickly. And then the fight never really ends. <laughs> There's just like <laughs> no, a good yeah. two and a half minutes of beating up three stegs a bit. Yeah. I have to admit. And then we get to. Oh, sorry, Kelly. Go on. No, Kelly. I was going to say, actually, I... um, on the subject of three stegs, it seemed to be like it was incomplete when it came in. And then you have Tornado I think it was, yeah. that just came and bashed it up. I think if you had a proper steg 2, you know, for series, you know, for extreme 1, you know, with a weight upgrade and, you know, a bit of fundamentals improvement, it could have been an interesting battle, but alas, we'll never know. Yeah, that's a good point, though. There were a, a, a handful of machines who absolutely, you could tell, just weren't ready for the extreme 1 deadline. Like, uh, Spawn Again was another one that had to take a little bit more tinkering before even it reached its uh, full series 5 design, but Tor bigger, Tornado... Bigger problem, really. Yeah, Tornado, Big though, looks was very dis absolutely disappointing. on point the moment it got there. Yeah, to yeah. so Tornado beats three stegs, and then we get the first fight against Pussycat. And Pussycat's one of those bots where it will win fights off surprising bots, and it's good for precise hits or mounting damage, but against this just beam of, like, Tornado that can just bum-rush them, yeah. like, from the start, it's... At a complete disadvantage. Yeah. And Tornado does massive damage to Pussycat here. I really like, like this fight for the damage it does. <laughs> it absolutely, yeah, as you say, carves into Pussycat's armor, absolutely rips into it, gets some wheels off as well. 
Yeah, it's complete domination. Yep, this was definitely, in Tornado history, this was the first battle where it really showcased how its potential, because the All-Stars were filmed first, weren't they? And yes, this was when you could see that Tornado was absolutely going to become a star. The Series 4 campaign was no fluke after all. And really, the only way Pussycat could have won that is if it bounced on top of Tornado and either ripped off the aerial or punched the tire yeah. somehow. It yeah, just that's right. There was, just, there was just no weak spots for Pussycat to exploit at all. It stood no chance. Exactly. As Luke said, when, when it's against machines, it can try and dig into a bit or warp their general shape. Like, even against Chaos 2, it really chucked in the flipper a bit. And against Hypnodisc, the wheels. But with Tornado, it's just a box and it's hard to get an actual tear into it to make it uh, its own performance uh, deplete and it, it got yeah, a couple of scratches at Tornado's like polycarb coverings but there wasn't really much else it could do no um, and then we get them for, so after beating the number 2 bot of series 4 we move on to the number 1 bot of series 4 Chaos 2 mm. um yeah, this one's a weird one. That it's a match heavily, basically almost entirely fought out in the CPZs. Um, I have to admit, after re-watching this battle, I'm so glad they did a rematch because, yes, Tornado won handily in the end, but the second battle afterwards ensured that it, it was no fluke because some Chaos 2 fans, diehard Chaos 2 fans, could have said, well, what would happen if, you know, Chaos 2 didn't overflip itself at the start? It could have won that, or... If its flipper didn't malfunction, as we saw there, it would have won. But then, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fine. That's, my that's, uh... my problem with these two fights is that if I'm right, they were at the end of one episode and at the start of the very next one, though. Like they literally followed each other up. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Which just felt a little bit. Yeah. There's, there's, fight, there's certain fights where you just hate the existence of the house robots, and this is one of them. They make this so annoying. Oh, the, JP's forced commentary, like the post-edited oh, ones, so are, are he's sometimes it so really funny. Hard. But here, oh. <laughs> when he's like, he's, they got the wrong one, like, what do you mean? It's like Chaos 2 flip dead metal onto Tornado, mate. Calm down. Yeah, and then Mephbolt has to self-write. Oh, it's oh. all a mess. It's all a mess. No, that was just good CPZ drama in there. You don't need to make it into something controversial. That was one of the most bizarre bits of house robot interference things they did in Extreme. I really didn't understand it at all. Yeah, I think you are right, Spitz. I think, given how big a mess this is... Um, the timing is unfortunate, but yeah. Yeah, hang on. Can you just stop for a moment? There seems to be some static for some reason. I can hear. Yeah, who's that coming from? I think it's coming from Nick. Oh, really? Yeah, I can't hear any, so it might be. Yep, it's gone now. Oh, okay, good, because I couldn't no, hear anything myself. <laughs> I can't hear anything now, so I think we're fine. Okay. Okay, um, I'll just uh, count this back in. Three, two, one. So, yeah, after the strange fight with Chaos 2, we get onto the first of five fights with Razor. Boy, is this predictable. You've got this flat box against Razor, who loves nothing more than just chewing on thing, flat boxes. Razor targets the wheels, and it very clearly disables the drive with... Um, it's crushed on the front wheel. There's really not much to say. Just this is just a type of bot that Razor can. Razor could beat five of these in a row if you just let them charge their batteries. Honestly, you could actually show this to someone who's never watched Robot Wars before, and they would think that Tornado was an also ran. <laughs> that was it, it performed that badly. But seriously, what could it do before it had its scoop or even its anti-crusher frame, which we'll get to in the next episode, hopefully. But, um, yeah, I said, it was a great robot that was just made to look like an absolute, you know, uncompetitive machine that could be, you know, that any robot like, I don't know, Mr. Nasty could have fulfilled or even King B or something like that. Yeah, yeah Razor was... Uh... 
Razor was very good. good at making very good robots look very bad sometimes. Yeah, like it did with yeah, Firestorm so... as well. Yeah. So yeah, Tornado gets the second in all stars, which ends up being enough to get them into the second world championship, which we shall cover later. But first, we'll go on to the next big stretch of uh, Tornado fights with their um, wins in the challenge belt. Uh, for the first challenge belt fight, they challenge Beamoff, and Beamoff is an interesting matchup because Tornado is it's more maneuverable, it's faster, uh, it's at, it's possibly got better drive power. But the kind of shape of Beamoff's scoop make, gives them gives them a, a potent weapon against Tornado when they can actually get them onto it. This was definitely a time when um, the Beamoff team could have perhaps... I think they realised just how sluggish their machine was, which is probably why their Series 6 machine was such an upgrade in the end. But yeah, it was definitely one of those what-if battles because... Yes, Tornado did win in the end, but what would have happened if Bermoff didn't have that issues with, in regards to self-writing? Would it have been a closer fight than usual, or would Tornado have achieved more pushes in the end? Who knows? Yeah, it's it's kind of always been one of the limitations of Bermoff in general. Like, one of the examples that comes to mind is the fight in series and against Eruption as well, where one machine stays grounded and recovers really quickly, whereas Bermoff Every time it gets flipped, it tumbles and falls over because it's such a boxy, tall shape. And like here, it gets suspended, as you say. And it's kind of just always been bare of slight problems against the true elite where it isn't refined enough design wise to always be capable of uh, being a consistent factor in the fight throughout, really. There is one thing I want to mention, which may have may have been more relevant to Chaos 2 fight. Um, about Tornado's Disc. Now, Tornado's Disc is kind of... It's a weird one, because it's... It's it's not... It's not like, like a... It's not a drum or a vertical yeah. spinner like we understand it now as a means of... Um, like, it, like, it's not very damaging. But what what you kind of see here, and in the Chaos 2 fight, uh, what the Disc does do is it kind of... It kind of knocks the other robot up, and from there, Tornado just kind of pushes under it and yeah. ends up turning them over and being able to slam into them. Yeah, it's very, very good at just being that little cherry on top of Tornado's pushes, isn't it? It just gets little bites in, warps in bits of armor, gets the machine higher on top of Tornado, and yeah, as you say, allows it to complete those even more awkward pushes and put its opponents into danger. So, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, and this is... You do... No, carry Go on, on, carry on. Uh, well, you do wonder how, like, um, later edition, how later versions of Beamoff, like um, Series 6, where it got faster, yeah, or, or Series 7, you wonder how they would have done against this um, kind of boxier Scoop Plus Tornado. Yeah. Because there, there is a one point in this fight where they almost get them uh, tipped over. And, of course, the house robots interfere. They just, sl- <laughs> they just slam into... Matilda just slams into Beamoff disc first for no reason. Um but yeah, t- Tornado ends up pulling off the victory, which probably correct. They're more manu- they they're just faster than Beamoff. They're just able to drive rings around them because Andrew Marchant, underrated driver. Yeah, very good, very consistent as well. Very There's consistent. not really so got... many fights I can think of where he had an off day. On on so... Tornado's website as well, I should just saying else about Beamoff as well is that. Beowulf actually does have a few victories to its name against Tornado. Yeah. So yeah. It, it did bring a point of contention when us wiki folk were doing a debate in a match between Series 6 Tornado and Series 6 Beowulf back in the day. And it was basically whether or not the match would be the same or whether Beowulf's fundamentals could have allowed it to exploit an improved Tornado. And yeah, it's definitely one of those what if battles because I think in a rematch later on, we could have seen a really good match for the ages there. And that's yeah, though Bermoff always struggled to get out of his heats though, so there you go. <laughs> well, we move up we move on to a fight between the the good bot that we saw a bit too much of in Extreme On and the really bad bot that we saw far too much of in Extreme <laughs> On, and that is Tornado versus Come and Getterix. Oh, I don't no. want to say anything here. Tornado wipes the floor with them. Oh, this was 
this was always going to be an absolute whitewash. And I always like the challenge belt as a format, but I've got to say, when you have a fight like this, it's just the biggest absolute filler possible. Yeah, especially when you look at every other, like, Tony Hill fights Behemoth, Wild Thing, Chaos 2, and Pussycat. Well, exactly, yeah. yeah. That, you just got Come and Get Eryx. Exactly. Like, come on, I lads. don't mind a Come and Get Eryx being involved in the first fight or two of the challenge belt. Let's say if the series was longer and they started off with Steel Avenger versus Come and Get Eryx. Let Steel Avenger hold the belt, have, let it have a fight, and then let it face Bearmouth or something. But you don't need Come and Get Eryx in this fight when Tornado's <laughs> already taken it off Bearmouth. Uh, I will say there are possibly two reasons why this battle could have occurred. The first one is, is that Come and Get Eryx Mortis-inspired design actually does theoretically have a chance of being Tornado because it's got a wedge, you know, could disrupt Tornado's pushes. And it also has an axe. And I've always wondered, why is it that no axe machine was able to, you know, hit the tires of its foe? I just found it really bizarre that no one could ever actually do that to Tornado. And come and get to it, oh, certainly I mean, wasn't going to do it. They're, they're so fast. I mean, to... You'd have to get it. You'd have to get at a certain angle that tornado is not going to let you get. Uh, yeah, and, to, and most to be able axes to get, on you need robot to be a, wars. Yeah, sorry. Continue. I was, no, no, I was just going to say to get that you'd have to be so precise, so good a driver. Yeah, mm, that's not coming get it, Rex. Yeah, <laughs> it's a no. bum. When it's, a, think... it's a D list can. <laughs> when, oh, the thing is, with most axes in robot wars as well, none of them had the specific type of wedge to counter specifically tornado like dominator 2 even fantastic machine great axe but tornado in that fight as we'll talk about later just made use of dominator 2's long sides and dictated that fight as well even against terahertz which was a great wedge for the time it <laughs> just got under it because yeah. it was so wide and low and pushed it in the pit it's, it's so difficult as luke said to just try and target those weaker areas even if they look obvious yeah, absolutely. And as it turns out, the only robot that theoretically stood a chance of doing so was a crusher, either e Razor. And even then, other crushers couldn't exactly achieve that either, as it turns out. You know, Snake Bite, for example. Oh, one, God. one other thing I would like to add about Tornado possibly facing Come and Get Rix, I do think that while Come and Get Rix's team isn't exactly as popular as, say, the Plum, you know, International Wreck Crew or the Sucroma Lot Boys, or the class act even, um, they were still very charismatic, you know, thinking that Bigger Brother didn't, didn't exactly deserve to, you know, represent United Kingdom or stuff like that. So maybe they just wanted to have another villain for Tornado to vanquish, you know, come and get it, come and get your X. Oh yeah, they, they, the team are good fun, and that's probably why Come and Get Rix even got, like, some of the spotlight in Extreme in the first place, because they had that handful of more comedic entries, but I don't know, it's just a weird matchup. Come and get Eryx versus Tornado. Like, I think there's many more matches they could have put together for Come and get Eryx to have and be a bit more entertaining than this. Yeah. So we move on to um, the next fight. Also against an All-Star. The, the kind of story of Extreme 1 is Tornado running rampant through the All-Star. <laughs> um, this one is Wild Thing. And, uh, it's a shame Wild Thing has the disc. Let's just say that I feel I feel Wedge Wild Thing would have stood a much better chance without the disc getting in the way. Yeah. Like while I think in general the disc wild thing does get a bit too much criticism in general for this specific fight, yeah. The one way Wild Thing would have been able to like get Tornado into a bit of danger is if it could have propped Tornado onto its own wedge like it did Hypno Disc in series four and stuff like that. But here, it just gives Tornado more of a surface area to push against. My theory for the disc was that it was meant to theoretically take out Hypno Disc because you know it seems very low to the ground. I think it could have potentially have achieved a side-on attack to Hypno Disc's wheels. The problem though is that Wild Thing was great because it was it was a great wedge machine. You could get underneath and push these machines around easily enough in Series Four, and when the disc wasn't useful, it just got in the way of being, it being able to actually assert itself. And it, I think it cost itself against Firestorm for the same reason. 
And yeah, yeah as I said, I think it would have been better off if World Thing was an interchangeable machine where you know they could just remove the disc and I don't know, add a bit add some extra armor or add a better flipper, maybe. And that would have given it the edge possibly over Tornado. Yeah, I, I understand why Nick Adams went with a weapon. It was one of those things where, like a couple of machines for the weight increase, they wanted to go with something that could give them damage points. Like, even Bearmoth went with that rather interesting axe, but... Hey, don't yeah. diss the axe. Don't diss the axe. It did amazingly well against Stinger. <laughs> mm, <laughs> to a degree, I'll say, but it's one of those where I understand why machines plopped on another weapon when they primarily weren't about damage but in certain instances it did get in the way well tornado's this does do decent damage to well things work but i think the main story of this really is just um what what you would have remarked on earlier tornado tornado is just so good at getting to the side and that's what yeah. it does most of this fight it just gets to the side and bullies wild thing around like that yeah, I would also... There's a lot that Tornado and Andrew Merchant did that so easily against Nick Adams, who is normally so amazing at keeping his front pointed to opposing machines himself. So, proper driving fight for the fans of those type of machines. I would like to make the argument as well, though, that this battle, no matter how good Tornado was in, in it, signified the start, in my opinion, of Tornado Overkill. Because this was a great tornado win, but it wasn't a great tornado fight. It was just I found it really boring, to be quite honest. And it, yeah, it just started that trend where I just didn't want to see tornado on my screen anymore. It's a good fight in isolation, isn't it? But you'd kind of hope that between two ram bots and pushers and control bots, it would be more of an even contest. So when tornado wins so easily, it kind of felt a bit bit of a letdown and you're like well what can really counter it at this stage apart from Razor oh, it's, a, it's a good thing in our debate about uh, what could beat uh, Tornado that it's next two fights in the challenge about what two bots had already beat <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> um, exactly exactly the, so. fir the first one we get is Chaos 2 and whereas the first one was competitive this is a oh, this is a wash yeah so oh. the, the saving grace though was that it definitely silenced the Chaos 2 fans who would have thought that Tornado beat Chaos 2 originally by a fluke. This time, it won yeah. very cleanly, so there's an yeah, upside just, to this one. Just a shame that in a fight that Tornado wins, my highlight from it is Chaos 2 flipping over Shunt a few times when it's lost drive itself. Yeah, Chaos 2 just doesn't seem 100% from the off yeah. It's very sluggish. Tor Tornado shouldn't be able to drive rings around George Francis like that. Um, yeah, there's not much to say about this. Chaos 2 literally manages two flicks against Tornado in the middle of the arena. That's all they manage to get off on them. And, uh, yeah, they just lose drive on one side pretty quickly. Um, we go on to the final fight of the challenge belt against Pussycat. And we definitely didn't need to see this one again. Oh, yeah. Again, it's quite similar to the, uh, Chaos 2 fight you just mentioned, where it rams home that Tornado's the superior machine in an individual matchup in this weight era. But to have it so close to the other fight that happened, it just... It doesn't really tell us anything apart from ramming home how um, Tornado does have the advantage, but it isn't good entertainment or something you want to see again. And it's fights like this that is why Tornado kind of got on people's nerves by the end of Extreme. Well, the thing, it also just is a testament to um, how weak Pussycat's weapon became after Series 4. Cause yeah, that's true. It, Pussycat can carve up, like, um, thin armor plating pretty convincingly, but Tornado is all just box section. Yeah. And, because... Uh, yeah, Pussycat lands a few hits on here, but they don't do a thing. Yeah, it doesn't Tornado. compromise the overall build of the machine, does it? Because Tornado just has so many like polycarbonate sheets over its actual chassis, and like unless Pussycat actually cut into the chassis and starts to compromise the structure, then nothing's really going to hinder Tornado in this type of fight, apart from a that's, random that's the thing. removable link 
hit. Pussycat which... can do that. Exactly. It, Hypno, Hypnodisc could do that, I'm sure. I'm sure Series 5 Hypnodisc would have made short work of Tornado, but Pussycat? It, it, can't da- it can't damage that fundamental like chassis. Yeah. So. Too, it just too up, robust. It ends up a Tornado pitting. Yep. What I would like to ask, though, as well, if people didn't want to see rematches of, of Tornado facing Chaos 2 and Pussycat, who should it have faced in a challenge belt? Who would have been justifiable opponents? Because I keep thinking back to Dominator 2, maybe Firestorm 3, if they were possibly... If they were available, I'd like to see Panic Attack. Oh, oh yes. Like that could be interesting. Yeah. That would be interesting, because Panic Attack has one of those weapons where it, it could just get it could just get knocked knocked out of alignment by a like, big tornado charge, or they could get under them and control them and carry... Nah. Panic Attack could carry out one of its uh, signature control wins, but that would have been more interesting than putting something like Pussycat up against them. Yeah, especially with Panic Attack's own extreme kind of featuring a few very lukewarm fights. Like, you have it beating things like Sheer Khan, but then it also getting comfortably beaten by Firestorm. So a fight like this probably could have been a bit more balanced and at least intriguing for how the box on forks matchup could have been so yeah I'd, I'd agree with something like that and yeah maybe a dominator two matchup earlier on and yeah and, and, uh, um firestorm three could others. have been interesting because you know without the wedge firestorm three could have won but on the other hand firestorm three wasn't exactly as secure as firestorm form five so tornado could have yeah. given it some more I trouble think, slams i think it's one of those where over the course of Extreme 1, 5, 6, and Extreme 2, you're always going to have a lot of matchups and a lot of rematches happen over time, but just would have been nice to spread out the Chaos 2 and Pussycat ones we did get in the end for something else, if possible. Obviously, if people don't put themselves forward for the challenge belt, there's not really much you can do, so we don't know why certain machines were in the matches and... It yeah, is what it, it, it is. Could literally, it could literally have been just they, they were asking around the pits who wants to yeah, on exactly. for the challenge belt, and Alan Gribble was like, yeah, I'll do it again. Yeah, and if Panic Attack was screwed up from the Annihilator or whatever, uh, then yeah. that could have been why it wasn't prepared. It's just hard to kind of pinpoint who was available. Yeah, so Tornado wins, its, wins the challenge belt. And, uh, next, they have, a, they have one of uh, the classic cooked up, ginned up vengeance <laughs> fights against Stinger. Um, Stinger seems like it seems Stinger seems like a bot that might have a chance because Tornado has these flat sides and it has a very hittable top, but Tornado just barrels them around for three minutes. A very boring fight. Actually, I really loved this fight. I thought it was really <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, me too, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah because... I, I think Stinger, it, it doesn't look it visually because it's all about Tornado pushing it around and I do agree that Tornado deserves to win. But Stinger does do a good amount of damage too for what is a a very hard opponent for it in on, in practice as well as on paper. I do love the way though as well. What is it with Secure Lot's obsession with trying to throw Stinger out of the arena? <laughs> it's just I don't understand why it had to keep he had to keep doing that. And yeah, it was one of those battles as well that I loved as well on the basis that. Both machines could have been criticised for the same thing. Tornado was criticised as a box on wheels. Stinger could have just been criticised as a spike on wheels, if you think about it. But both robots mean so much more than that. And that's why both ended up being grand finalists at some point. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, I don't think it's an all-time classic fight or anything like that. But I think it's a, a decent little opener to the series as such. Yeah. My main takeaway from it is just Stinger bonking dead metal and it cuts to the stinger guy of the afro one just going <laughs> that's my main takeaway that is fight. fair enough mate one other thing um, that i found really unusual with this fight is why was Revbot used to count down the fight because i don't remember that ever happening yeah in any other i battle. think that was probably them just trying to really draw attention to Revbot having a clock more than anything like i can't remember the exact shot but for all we know that could have just been taken from any fight of RefBot actually counting down a machine and they just chucked it in this fight for it 
actually ending the fight and counting down the remaining 10 seconds. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's probably just one of those things to draw attention to RevBot's new feature more than anything, I'd imagine. I'd imagine as well that I think RevBot was actually used to signify a countdown to the live audience because, of course, they can't actually see the countdown animation that we, us yeah. television viewers, get to see. But yeah, yeah, it was just a little bizarre thing to say the least. Because what was the other, what was the next battle after Tornado versus Stinger? Wasn't there a knockout in that? I can't remember now. Ooh, I can't actually remember. Yeah, let me but... have a quick look. <laughs> Continue talking in the meantime. I'll just have a yeah. quick look. But it was just it was just a really bizarre placement in the end. But yeah, a very good fight nonetheless. So, the second fight... Oh, it was the mayhem with Pussycat, Smidzy and something. I well, can't remember well, that. Well, Smidzy was knocked out, wasn't it? So... Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> could, we'll could just be... move on, I'll cut that. Yeah, let's just, just move Speaking it on. Speaking of mayhems, we get the best ending to a mayhem imaginable. <laughs> Tornado vs. Steel Avenger and King V Powers. Tornado spends most of his fights with bullying Steel Avenger because... Of course it would, it's a big box. <laughs> Don't ever can push those around for days. But then King V, thank God, barrels in from the side with a slam that KOs them. And I think King V is probably the worst bot in this in Series 5 that I'd give a chance of beating Tornado because of those spikes on the front. Yeah. <laughs> I, said just... I mean, I think in a one on one, Tornado would probably always just keep on top of King V, but. Probably. That yeah. doesn't mean that I'd, I'd trade the fight we got for a rematch one-on-one -on -one or anything, because this was just a really fun fight, even with just King B and Steel Avenger. Like, King B loses a wheel because Steel Avenger moves forward into it. It's hilarious. So yeah, and that would have shown that Tornado would have easily beaten King B, because it would have just needed to keep slamming into King B's sides, and those wheels would have come off, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure... I'm sure... I'm sure most fights Tornado would just suffocate King B, but it's the, it's like the it's the less it's the least good bot I can imagine pulling off like a surprise win that isn't just like Tornado bursting into flames. Or yeah, that is that is a fair <laughs> shout. Uh, as well about that, um, said it was just one of those cases where Tornado was just being used in like three or four battles, as I mentioned previously. I mean, Hypno Disc, as I mentioned as well, was victimized by this tight grueling schedule so it was bound to happen and i believe it was possibly featured in a very very reliable book called the ultimate guide that tornado's <laughs> next battle was an absolutely decisive challenge belt victory if i remember rightly so hey it all ends well in the end for the team yeah i i think it really i, I, I think it really was just whatever king be hit they probably like split a chain or something um, but yeah, thank thankfully we didn't have to get in the entire episode of Tornado and Annihilator. It would have been absolute overkill. In a pretty weak Annihilator eventually as well, especially after mm. the two good flippers had to pull out. So yeah, I couldn't <laughs> yeah, really have seen yeah. much stopping it apart from a random Disco Inferno side hit or something. So Well, Panic Attack yeah. was in there, but I guess Panic Attack would have been more victimised by Disco Inferno than Tornado yeah. would have been. But... Yeah, it's just one of those things in the end. So to close out Extreme 1, we have the second World Championship. A tornado in the melee against Yeba Robo, Philippa, and Panda. And Tornado really does meet its match for a bit it against does. Panda. It does, yeah. No, this yeah. is a great fight to start with, mainly between those two. And oh, Imagine if, these, if they were in like a different melee... <laughs> and in the semis, it was Tornado versus Panzer or something in the final. Oh, oh. I don't know, Razor breaks down or Vinny Blood takes the machine away for whatever <laughs> reason. And it's just no. like Tornado yeah. v Panzer one-on-one -on -one for a whole uh, fight. That would have been great because, as Luke uh, said, it really was a proper good matchup at first. Here. Well, it's yeah, because Panzer, Panzer has comparable power, and that, the shape of that scoop on the, the sh scoop on the front does give it ground advantage and yeah. defensive capability. Exactly, it like hugs around the front of the tornado. <laughs> it's low enough and wraps around it, and 
it flipped it over a few times. Really good flips as well. Chucked it into the arena wall a couple of times. And then along comes a Belgian machine to ruin the man's <laughs> a dream. Yeah. Philip had just one of the t- tr- true shithouse spots. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I've got between just, this and the black hole victory. I've grown to love Philip, uh, to be quite honest. Oh yeah, it's one of those like lovable, modestly decent robots, but it doesn't have yeah. to chuck out a couple of really good robots in the process. Yeah, and I have to admit as well that um, they really couldn't find a better South African representative. I mean, couldn't they have just <laughs> added crustacean in there and pretend? You know, with the South African oh. connection that machine would have had. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, poor Robo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I know, uh, just, just, to go, just to go very quickly back to Panzer, because I know um, one, of the, one of the things that makes Wolverine um, relevant at all is it apparently is victories over uh, Tornado. So I think that kind of, um, those kind of scoop things are probably among the best robots to beat this... Um, to beat Drum Tornado. I actually think yeah. that Drillzilla could have been Tornado. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, because... it would have been a good fight, that as well, yeah. Yeah. I think Manta would have possibly challenged Tornado if it was the Extreme series, Extreme Warriors Series 2 version, but, yeah, the first yeah. version of Manta wasn't as great. I but think a lot of the... Too, first think... version's too unreliable for me to back that. Yeah, I think there's a good handful of the... Um... American talky pushers that could have had a good matchup with Tornado in this era, though, for sure. Yeah. Um, so then we get the second of five Razor fights, and it's the first <laughs> appearance of the scoop. The hey, charity scoop. But JP yeah. still thinks it's the disc. Way. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Tornado and it no better. can't it quite get no the spinning disc off into play. I wonder why. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't do it doesn't do anything for Tornado's chances here. No, like you're gonna have to be pretty special to out ground clearance uh, weight increased razor. Mm. As, yeah, this the, uh, the only type of weapon that could Tornado at that point could have possibly used is some sort of proper spinning disc. You know, us to buy Hypno Discs flywheel or something because <laughs> yeah, there was absolutely no reason for. Tornado to use the charity scoop in the end. They might as well have just tried Saint to go for the wheels instead. And I guess because I guess because they because they tried the drum and it failed so miserably, they thought maybe they might be able to get on the razor. Yeah, you kind of understand the like desperation in terms of why they went for it. I think either way, they just didn't really have a chance. So I can't blame I mean, them for trying anything different. Up until they got the counter, Razor, but yeah, yeah, mercifully Razor goes for the pitting, but even that takes forever. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's just, just slowly sliding it. off the beach. It's a bit of a stinker that pitting, isn't it? Yeah, they could yeah. have just thrown themselves in, and they would have carried Razor win in anyway. One thing to add as well is, could Tornado have used its scoop in any of the other extreme battles? Because yeah, it didn't need to use the scoop in the end, but. Would it have helped at all in some of the other battles it had a bit more of a contention with, e.g. like Behemoth? Or was it actually a liability? Because, as I said, this scoop wasn't exactly the Series 6 one we would all get to know very much of. I think I think the scoop and the, uh, the spinner were both just really good weapons either way, apart from against Razor, I think. Against most machines, they probably could have won with either setup, but they did win anyway. So yeah, most of the big scalps they claim they they probably win with Eva. Yeah, because yeah, Wild Thing seems like the one it'd be the most advantageous against. Yeah, because the as Luke said, the spinner was really good at just being that cherry on top of the pushes, and the if if they added the scoop, it would just give them a bit more control than damage, but it probably wouldn't have made a difference. In terms of points or the overall result, I'd imagine. Yeah, because Tornado had just such superior control and aggression. Yeah. Possibly a style as well. Um, Harkening back to Panic Attack, though, who would you think would win between Panic Attack and the Scoop Tornado? Because I actually think that would have been closer than the Disc Tornado battle. I think probably... I feel like probably Tornado... 
Yeah. It all depends. I think it if, if, if I Tornado think got a bit eager and went for a really pacey drive and slightly misjudged the angle, then who knows what could have happened and if Panic Attack could have hooked its wheels. But in general, I'd probably back Tornado like 65 35, something mm-hmm. like that. I would go 60 40 because the f- advantage panic attack would have here is that at least it doesn't have to worry about a weapon damaging its forks now because yeah i said that you don't have the disc to worry about now so theoretically under five minutes panic attack could have gotten that potential lift and carry of doom so definitely one of those what if battles but yeah that that caps off the extreme one coverage and after that, we go into Tornado's very strange Series 5 campaign. Their first fight against Grave Digger, they've spent a whole season taking out all the All Stars <laughs> and they start off their season with Grave Digger. Oh, don't dis. Not much don't, to say. Don't dis Grave Digger. It's a semi finalist. I'll dis Grave Digger. <laughs> it's a, a semi finalist. I'll dis Grave Digger. It's a semi finalist. Na- Napalm was the same semi finalist. Well, that was Napalm was a Series 2 semi finalist, whereas Grave Digger beat Mortis. And almost beat Stegosaurus. I mean, admittedly, this version didn't, but <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, this version died on the second big ram from Tornado. Oh, uh, but I do. Very quick KO from Tornado. I do think the Series 5 Grave Digger had some potential. And again, it, yeah. once again, it shows that Tornado is simply too good for, you know, mid tier opposition in the end. Because Grave Digger, a machine that could have won with the axe if it hit the wheel, again, just had no option options at all here i wonder how it would have done with the flipper though yeah it's one of those fights which just feels a bit of a waste i think something like wolverine was quite similar where you'd want them to lose to a tornado or wheelie big cheese in round two rather than round one you know just give them a fight just to play about with first but in terms of the actual matchup as you say it really was just like a slight moment of worry when Tornado missed the axe uh, attack that Gravedigger attempted, but once they got him behind on a decent shunt, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I also think that they, they could have replaced Gravedigger with either Saber 2 for uh, Evolution, and that would have been really interesting. I would have loved to have seen Tornado demolish Evolution. Oh, that would have been great. <laughs> So we move on from the Grave Digger fight into one of, probably one of the, probably the biggest upset ever in the Robot Wars, uh, versus Theotor. Mm. Um, yeah. One. Yeah. I think it's, this one's a weird one, because it, for like the first two minutes or so, it's a very standard Tornado fight, really. It's just pushing, just kind of pushing Theotor around. With yeah. Dieter putting up a more spirited performance than most of Tornado's victims. Yeah, it, Dieter wasn't being like completely bullied into CPZ to being pinned in there for minutes. It was, it was driving back when Tornado completed its own drives, but it didn't exactly push Tornado around itself. It, it didn't slow down Dieter, and it didn't show any signs of fatigue, but it's not like Dieter... Deator's upset was domination from start to finish or anything. Yeah, Deator just needed a bit more pushing power because I do think the scoop setup could have given it some advantage here if it had the fundamentals to back it up. And I just love how frustrated it seemed that Tornado was getting because it was doing all these slams and Deator just was like, you know, just kept standing up to them. It was like, come on, just die or something. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I, I think it's possible that um, Deator's scoop, kind of the, the height it was at, I think it was possible it was pinning one of Tornado's like drives, like one of dr- it's Tornado's wheels. Yeah, uh, it's it slightly it's propped it off the so. ground. I explain why it? Tornado's kind of struggling to push them at points. Yeah, it slightly props Tornado off the ground. Like, it does make it a little bit awkward. Uh, Deator wasn't exactly a, a machine that was good against flippers, but Against in like a pushing fight like this, it was always gonna chug along and keep going. But uh, obviously, I don't think even uh, they expected to have the end result of what happened. No, to- yeah, Tornado's chain snapped at one point, <laughs> and from there on, it was just dead in the water. Did they? And Dieter gets off that pitting, which 
Did they equip? It's good. Did they like equip it. the same chain that they used for King B or something? It just seems like to me that the only way to defeat Tornado in this era was a get Razor or b just hope in vain that a chain would snap. So yeah. I mean, maybe it was. Maybe maybe all the extreme fights took their toll. Yeah, you never it's possible. know. Possible. Come and get her, it's put it on the edge of breaking, and then boom. <laughs> it over the edge. Oh. I, I, I do think it's I do think it's very fortunate though that this happened because the novelty of Deatol winning is, I mean the the ultimate consequences were disastrous. Spawn again another semi final. God forbid, oh, Jesus God. Um, but I it is kind of fortunate to have Deatol win this because if if people were getting sick of Tornado in Extreme One, then whew, a semi final run. <laughs> yeah, uh, it wouldn't have been an entertaining semi-final one either because it would have run right back into me. Oh, <laughs> oh! But what would it? How would it have done against Wild Thing again and S3? Because that's interesting. Because um, yeah, it probably would have dealt with Wild Thing handily enough. But S3, you know, attack it at the wrong angle, and Tornado could have been in some serious trouble. Yeah, that is a weird. One. That is a very weird one because both because throwing Tornado into the mix because. S3's got a... S3 is so long. They could easily get under them. They could easily just get to those sides and bully them around. But then Wild Thing is going to... Then Wild Thing's going to be very aggressive in there. So I have no idea who takes that. Yeah, that could have been really interesting. And if Tornado wins, then they're not going to put it back up against Razor. So it would have another fight with Chaos 2. And then <laughs> get into the semi-finals. Or possibly bigger and then brother. Razor, Razor beats bigger brother in their fight, and then you got Razor and Tornado in the series five semi-finals. All kinds Blimey. of stuff going on there. Hmm. Yeah. Potentially they go up against Hypnodisc, which I do think, assuming they don't slip on the scoop, Tornado Hypnodisc just gets in a big hit that knocks one of the sides off. Yeah. <laughs> um. But going back to the Deer Tour fight though. Um. I think most people nowadays have started to realise that, you know, it was a bit of a fluke win for Dear Tour in the end. But, man oh man, if there was a um, list for the top 10, you know, feel-good wins, that would probably rank up there. Up there along with, well, many of other Dear Tour's wins, quite frankly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's an iconic win. And obviously, we know more about the flaws in it as such nowadays but that doesn't mean that we'd want to trade it in for like tornado winning the fight or anything yeah and believe it or not as well tornado would have beaten spawn again in about five seconds because somehow oh, spawn no. again broke down against deator i, I wish deator had been able to last five seconds <laughs> really yeah, it's, do. it's deator against the flipper mate you're asking for too much yeah yeah, yeah. yep yeah. But in, so yeah, that concludes our cover, that concludes uh, part one of our lovely. coverage of Tornado. Before we go, what are our favourite fights so far? Tornado versus Stinger, definitely. Um, <laughs> I love the wee big cheese fight because both machines were struggling in that. And yeah, I said, I'll be honest. As much as I loved the Deer Tour fight, it wasn't really much of a fight. It was one side until that fluke victory. To be honest, most of Tornado's wins are just so well controlled to the point where they're not very entertaining, to be quite honest, even back here. Yeah, I think I agree. It's kind of hard to pick, up, pick out a favourite. Well, but I will um, actually, I will argue though that the opening melee for Series 4 is highly underrated. I really do feel sorry for Caterkiller in that because, you know, you had two, you know, semi final tier machines essentially compete against it. But then there was just so much stuff going on afterwards. You know, you had Tornado almost pitting shunt in that battle that I don't think was picked up much. And yeah. um, as well as Tornado driving into the pit for some reason. But yeah, I'd say that was one of my favourites too. Yeah, I, I think the Wheelie really Big Cheese one is the best show. I was about to say that, yeah. I think there's Wheelie really Big Cheese fight's good. Chaos 2 All-Stars fight is good, but then you've got the controversy. The... Uh, for, there is a couple of losses. The mayhem is really fun, um, and then I think the second world championship melee oh, yeah, could have been right. Nice could have been right up there if it versus Panzer was a little bit longer, but it was still a good fight nevertheless. So 
Oh. It's kind of whatever you fancy here. There isn't a true standout, but there's a few good fights for different reasons at the same time. Yeah. And I've just realised saying that they could have possibly done... They could have done a challenge belt between Panzer and Tornado for Extreme Warriors. That would have been oh, a tremendous battle. I, and imagine I'm, that, an Extreme Warriors and UK challenge belt. That would have been fantastic. Yeah, I don't understand why they didn't oh, do that in the end. What an idea. Because instead of having that, uh, you know, what was it, the War of Independence where the UK once yeah, again wins, yeah, that's right. you could have had Tornado <laughs> trying to defend against the best of the American machines. Oh, that would have been man. great. Uh, and maybe against the Dutch machines, but let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Philippa would end up beating Hypnodisc or something. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, that is it from us for today. Um, next time we will, of course, be covering the rest of Tornado's career from uh, Extreme Warriors 2. We'll be starting off with, I suppose, right up until Series 7. Uh, until then, I've been your host, Luke. Um, and from me and Nick and Space, goodbye. See you soon.